just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Keith Russell. I work for the Australian National Data Service. I, I'm your host for today. Um, my colleague uh, Suzanne Sabine is behind the uh, scenes co-hosting the webinar with me. Just a usual um, little bit of background. The Australian National Data Service works with research organisations around Australia to establish that they will have them trusted partnerships, reliable services and enhanced capability in the research sector. Uh, we work together with two other NCRIS funded projects Research RDS, Research Data Services and Nectar uh, to create an aligned set of joint investments to deliver transformation in the research sector. So this webinar is part of a series of activities we are undertaking to uh, which aim to support the Australian research community in increasing our ability to manage our research data as a national asset. There we are. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, this is a, a third in a series of webinars around FAIR, so we've already had the um, webinars on findable and accessible, and today interoperable, next week reusable. So today I will give a brief introduction about uh, what is interoperable uh, as described uh, under the FAIR data principles in Force 11, and then I will, I'm very grateful that Simon and Jonathan uh, have um, uh, available to talk about uh, what they did in practice in the um, in the Osnome project to make their data interoperable. I think it's a great example to show how this quite complex topic can actually be carried forward in practice. So this is what Force 11 says about interoperable and um, first of all a few things to keep in mind. Um, so just reiterating a few things I, I mentioned in the, the very first webinar. So um, when they talk about data and as you look at these headings you'll see that they talk about data and metadata so interoperable applies both to the metadata describing the data collection and the actual data itself. Uh, another point to keep in mind is uh, throughout the FAIR principles they think a lot around not only data being usable for humans but also for machines and that provides a, a huge benefits in bringing together um, disparate data sets, in bringing together bits of knowledge that are, hit, that are uh, um, uh, distributed over different data sets. And interoperable is a key element there to make sure that data can be brought together and actually can be, you can, we can get those benefits out of bringing data together which will enable new knowledge discovery, new relationships to be uh, discovered, uh, new patterns to be recognized, all those, all those pieces of work. So as we look at these three headings that they've listed under interoperable, first one there is that data and metadata use a formal, accessible, shared and broadly applicable language for knowledge representation. To keep in mind there is that not only for you as the research or the researcher that has created the data, but also for another researcher that wants to understand the data and use the data, it's useful that they understand the language you've used and that that is a standard, standardized language, something that other, other, um, other users can also pick up and use. So um, ideally that is the case for the metadata, uh, sorry, so that is definitely the case for the metadata and ideally that would also be used in the actual uh, data itself. Very basic example, if a researcher has observed that there's, they saw a magpie, they can write in, I saw a magpie, but it's much more useful for a researcher somewhere else on the other side of the world that you write in that it's an Australian magpie and that is a Kratikus tibichen. That means that a researcher on the other side of the world has, as a, uses, uh, using a standard language will actually be able to better understand what you meant and what, what, uh, what that description is about. Now it's not just in the actual uh, wording used in the vocabulary used, but it's also in um, uh, in a in the. F it's useful to have a framework around that, which will allow the data to be also be machine readable and picked up um, by machines and used and interpreted. Now, one obvious example which get meant gets mentioned quite a lot is using RDF and ontologies. Uh, that is uh, quite common in the life sciences uh, and life, a number of life science researchers and that were quite active in the Force 11 group. But one thing they they emphasize is that it doesn't just have to be through RDF and ontologies. There might be other solutions for this and they don't want to, um, don't want to make it exclusively um, through those technologies. So that's something to keep in mind. Re regarding the making of data interoperable, that's what I've invited Simon and, and Jonathan to come and talk about and they'll be able to talk about it in much more detail. Uh, the second point here is around vocabularies and using vocabularies and they emphasize that if you use a vocabulary, well first of all, 
try and use one that already exists um, or is agreed and is agreed on by the community. If you have a term or not, if you have terms in, in there that are not in that vocabulary but otherwise it fits, try and get them added to that vocabulary. And finally, if if that is not possible, then only then and only then start creating your own vocabulary. So please don't go out and create vocabularies for everything. Rather look if there is already a community agreed vocabulary. Also, make sure that that vocabulary itself is fair, so findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable. So if in your data set you should have a reference to that vocabulary you are referring to and make sure that that vocabulary can be found just as long as your data set can also be found. Final point they make is that the data and the metadata should include qualified references to other data and metadata. So what they mean there is that it shouldn't just be a reference to another data set for example but also an indication what that relationship is. So it's not just it's related somehow to this other data set, but perhaps it is a subset of another data set or it builds on another data set using standardized terminology. A little more on qualified references. From the perspective of the metadata especially, it's valuable to not only refer to other uh, players or other elements around the uh, around your data set but to do that using identifiers so for example if you are describing your data set and saying well it was created there was a, somebody was involved in creating that data set provide a qualified identifier that that person was for example the author of that data set and if possible also use an identifier to identify that person that allows uh, other relationships to be made and it allows further connections to be made and that information to be picked up and used especially for by, uh, in machine um, uh, when being analyzed by machines. So just a list here of possible identifiers, these are just examples, there are more identifiers out there but for example if you're referring to an author include their ORCID, if you're referring to a publication use the DOI that um, is related to that publication, if you are referring to software Nowadays, you can, assign, you can assign a DOI to a software package and refer to that DOI, etc.